Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back. Today, we'll talk about the part two of rule point of care ultrasound in proper managed to pulmonary embolism, evidence-based approach. Before we talk, I need to announce that uh, one of my cases uh, uh, for the rule of uh, critical care ultrasound and lung ultrasound in management of COVID-19 pneumonia was published a couple of days back in emergency medicine and the critical care journal. It is open access journal. You can uh, go through this case. It's a full study of real uh, interesting uh, full study about uh, COVID pneumonia and the rule of lung ultrasound. And I will give you the link in the first comment about the my playlist, uh, which is six cases managed by uh, lung ultrasound with, in COVID pneumonia patient. Uh, and including this case report to patient, I, uh, I believe it will be very beneficial, inshallah. In the first part uh, of the rule of uh, critical care ultrasound and the point of care ultrasound in uh, management of pulmonary bliss, we talk about the rule of echocardiography. And we mentioned that there is very specific signs in echocardiography which denoting that the patient has pulmonary embolism, which could be going in the side of pulmonary embolism. These signs are uh, 66 signs, McConnell signs, uh, right heart thrombi, and this really, if you find these signs in patients with hemodynamic instability and the clinical probability of pulmonary embolism is there, and no obvious other causes, you can start reperfusion, you can start the TBA in this patient if you cannot do CT pulmonary angio, because these signs really are very specific to pulmonary embolism. Uh, and we discuss these signs in details in part one. For anyone not seeing part one, uh, I uh, recommend to uh, see part one before going through this part, okay? But unfortunately, these specific signs in echocardiography for pulmonary embolism are not sensitive. It's only present in 20% of cases. So what can we do? We should complement our echo study in managed pulmonary embolism by lower limb compression ultrasound technique, DVT study by, for, by, lung, uh, by uh, ultrasound, and lung ultrasound to look for signs of pulmonary infarction inside the lung by ultrasound. First, lower limb compression ultrasound technique or compression ultrasound. Nowadays, lower limb compression ultrasound has largely replaced venography for the diagnosing DVT. Compression ultrasound has sensitivity of more than 90% and specificity of almost 95% for proximal symptomatic DVT. Compression ultrasound show DVT in 30 to 50% of patients with pulmonary embolism. And finding a proximal DVT in patients suspected of having pulmonary embolism is considered sufficient to warrant anticoagulant treatment without further testing. So it's complementary study. And as you see here, in patients admitted to the emergency, the emergency department with hemodynamic instability and suspicious of pulmonary embolism, combination of venous ultrasound with cardiac ultrasound may further increase specificity. Uh, and uh, with uh, Professor Daniel, uh, he diagnosed almost 90% of cases by by uh, the uh, DVT study and uh, some finding in the lung. Conversely, if the echocardiography without signs of right ventricular dysfunction and the normal venous ultrasound in patient significantly distressed, you can exclude pulmonary embolism and look for another cause with high negative predictive value. So, to sum up, ECO has very specific signs for pulmonary embolism, but unfortunately, these specific signs are not sensitive. So you need to complement your ECO by lower limb DVT study by compression test and lung ultrasound. First, DVT study. How to do it? Good news. This is a link of my playlist about the DVT and the pulmonary embolism, and there is real practical how real, real practice how to do it in very simple way on volunteer we did it in our courses and we put in video in volunteer very easy how to to compress the vein where to compress the vein and what will be the result of your finding uh, and this playlist you can go through there is a lot of finding about this uh, dvt and the balloons don't worry you will do it very simply inshallah but now i need you to concentrate on 
golden rules using ultrasound for DVT assessment at ICU. These are the golden rule for any patient dealing with a critically ill patient in this regard. First one, please consider compressibility of the vein, not color or equationistry of the lesion. So, as you see, it is called compression test. It's only you will compress the vein and you will see if this vein compress totally compressible, it's clear. But as you see here, this is the right femoral vein and this is the artery. Vein inside medial artery is lateral. When you press, compress by high frequency probe on the common femoral vein to just distort the artery, the amount of pressure to just distort the artery, you will find the vein is not compressible here and there is lesion inside. So this is positive study for DVT by 95% sensitive specific as you see here in this patient. Rule two, please in, uh, in ICU look for the mobility of the thrombus. This is very, very, very important in management. Look, these two lesions are ecogenic. This is the left femoral vein artery, as you see here, mobile thrombus inside, and here is the right side, and there is also ecogenic thrombus like this, but stick to the wall and do not mobile at all. So this is an acute lesion, this is an chronic organized lesion, and there is recanalization inside. So please look for mobility, it's very important. As you see here, in this chronic lesion, there is recanalization inside the lesion here, and it is ecogenic and they stick to the wall and not mobile. Look for here also. You see these two lesions in longitudinal uh, study. This is ecogenic and this is hypoechoic, and both are acute and mobile thrombus. Mobile thrombus in ICU is very important to us because your patient can collapse at any time with this mobile thrombus. If you find this mobile thrombus, please don't move your patient a lot. This is number one. Number two, if big considered IVC filter. So rule two, look for mobile lesion. As you see in this uh, patient, I saw a couple of days back, I did critical care ultrasound for this patient. He collapsed one hour later and we interfered very early on zero time. As you see here, there is mobile thrombus, thrombus slipped, dislodged, and there is compressibility of the vein. The same vein became compressible. And as you see here, this is the first eco study, mild enlargement of the right ventricle with sick wall, denoting shower of pulmonary emboli. And this is after collapse, acute core pulmonary, as you see here, marked dilatation with compression of the left side. And we interfere in no time because we know already there is mobile thrombus here. And if your patient collapse, just put the phaser ray probe in the echo and look for signs of acute core pulmonary. Rule three, search for all possible sites of eye of line insertion, especially in the era of COVID patient. COVID patient, patients are hypercoagulable patient and you, you will expect to see a thrombus in the site of light insertion. As you see here, this is the thrombus. I am compressing and no compressibility of the vein, axillary vein thrombus. And when I fire the color, this is all around the color. And you see here, feeling the effect inside. And please consider the central line. You see here, the left internal jugular with organized thrombus and no compressibility here. And here is fresh thrombus, uh, central line related moving inside the internal jugular with hypoechoic sick wall due to phlebitis. This is very important to consider. If you put the high frequency probe at the site of line insertion, you will very clearly see this thrombus. And if you see it once, you will not forget, believe me. Okay, if I rule three, consider the line insertion sites. Okay, as you see, DVT study compression test is very important complementary test to echocardiography. What about lung ultrasound in pulmonary embolism? They tried to use lung ultrasound in diagnosis of pulmonary embolism very, very, very long time ago. 
the detection of thromboembolic lesions of the lung by thoracic ultrasonography was first described 40 years ago. They did this study on the cadaver lung. They put in the water and they did ultrasound to explore the lesion which is confirmed pulmonary infarction and they look for a subpleural consolidation which we are talking about now. Professor Matches did a lot of job, a lot of work about this, and they did a multi-center study in the chess journal, and they compare between the lesion, which is a pulmonary infarction confirmed by CT pulmonary angio, and to confirm this lesion by the, the, the finding in lung ultrasound. And they find a very highly suspicious lesion, which is correlated with the CT, which is a finding of lung ultrasound of pulmonary embolism, we will discuss in detail just now. This uh, Professor Rizik also did a lot of job about the comparison between CT pulmonary angio, pulmonary infarction lesion, and the lung ultrasound lesion. And they talk about specificity, sensitivity of 74%, and the specificity of 95%. It's very good specificity, really. Very good complementary test and the easy test if you complement, especially in the era of COVID. In this study also, they talk about 90 and 60% sensitivity and specificity. It's a very good number. Okay. All the previous study talk about a specific lung ultrasound lesion which we diagnose pulmonary infarction by the criteria of this lesion. What's the criteria of this lesion? There are a number of criteria which can be applied in the diagnosis of pulmonary embolism. The most characteristic finding in pulmonary embolism is hypoechoic, pleural-based, parenchymal alteration. Greater than 85% of these lesions are wedge-shaped. A single hyperechoic structure localized at the center of the lesion, which indicates the presence of air-filled bronchial, may be detected in 20% of the patient. Pleural involvement in pulmonary embolism initially lead to localized fluid collection. After that, you can find the basal pleural effusion. And most importantly, you need to uh, explore the lesion by the color Doppler imaging. Color Doppler imaging may provide additional diagnostic information. In pulmonary infarction, pulmonary arterial flow cannot be detected by color Doppler ultrasound, referred to as consolidation with little perfusion, are congested in the same time you will don't you, you you will not expect to see any color inside the wedge lesion but outside the lesion you can see congested thromboembolic vessels which is called vascular size let us talk about this size if as they talk about you are go you will go with high frequency probe or phase array probe to the lung to search for a wedge shaped pleural based hypoechoic lesion and you will search for hyperechoic lesion inside, which is a bronchial, air-filled bronchial. And you will fire the color. You will expect to see no color inside the lesion, but you can see congested vessel outside the lesion. Okay? This is very important. And you search for pleural effusion. First will be localized. After that will be basal. Let us see in real patient. This is the wedge-shaped, wedge-shaped lesion, pleural-based lesion. Wage shape, pleural based with localized pleural effusion here. Look again, this two lesion, this is one lesion, this is another lesion, pleural based, wage shape, and you see here localized pleural effusion and wage shaped pleural based. So this is suspected lesion. And later on, you can you can see basal, dirty, turbid pleural effusion of hemothorax pulmonary infarction. And you need to fire a color. Okay. Once you fire the color, you will find vessels, congested vessels outside. But inside the lesion, no color. I decrease the scale here to 12. No color in this wedge-shaped lesion. Pleural base. No color inside because there is infarction, but there is congested vessel outside. This is the vascular side. Again, wedge-shaped lesion, pleural based, and when you fire the color, no color inside, but there is congested vessels outside. No color inside. Okay, 
طيب what if this pleural based subpleural consolidation is infection not infarction you will see I decrease the scale here to 15 and you see here a lot of color inside the lesion because this is pneumonia and not infarction a lot of color and moreover if you fire the spectral doppler you will find very good spectral doppler of the of the pulmonary arterial branches here okay this is very important pleural based wedge shape with localized pleural effusion you will fire the color if there is color inside it's going with infection if no color going with infarction and you can expect to see congested uh, vessels outside and moreover you can fire the doppler to see the doppler study inside the region both the doppler denoting blood flow so if there is blood flow here it's not infarction last you will search for this hyperechoic lesion inside which is denoting air field bronchi hyperechoic lesion inside okay it's present only in 20 percent of cases okay so again wedge shaped hypoechoic pleural based lesion with localized pleural fusion and the basal pleural fusion and hyperechoic lesion inside and at the same time if you fire the color doppler you would find uh, no color inside but congested vessel outside and my opinion the most important thing to differentiate between subpleural consolidation pleural in, in bullism infarction and infection or other information like trali is a degree of respiratory stress degree of respiratory stress if the degree of respiratory stress is out of proportion of the lesion if you see only few wedge shaped lesion and too much respiratory stress please you should consider the pulmonary embolism especially if there is signs of acute corporeal but if the pneumonia is a cause of subpleural consolidation you will expect a lot of subpleural consolidation and a lot of pili and as you see here it is an integrative approach by echo by compression ultrasound of the lower limb and by echocardiography by the end of these sessions i finished the rule of uh, point of care ultrasound in management of the acute pulmonary embolism it is an integrative approach and it's very specific and sensitive for pulmonary embolism and i'm so happy uh, to uh, meet you in this project and see you in another project bye bye